Brachial plexus is a network of nerves which supply the upper limb. It is formed by the ventral rami of the spinal nerves C5 to T1. It is located in the axilla. The roots emerge between the scalene muscles in the neck. And the roots of the C5 and C6 unite to form the upper trunk. The roots of C8 and T1 unite to form the lower trunk. And C7 continues as the middle trunk. Now just behind the clavicle, these trunks will give off divisions. Anterior and posterior divisions from each trunk, upper, middle and lower. This is in the term anterior and posterior is in reference to the uh, humerus bone of the upper limb. Now, the posterior divisions of all the three trunks will unite to make the posterior cord. The anterior division of the uh, upper trunk and the middle trunk unite to make the lateral cord. The anterior division of the lower trunk continues as the medial cord. Now, these terminologies, lateral, posterior and medial, are on the basis of the location of the cords with reference to axillary artery. The terminal branches from the cords are musculocutaneous nerve from the lateral cord, axial nerve and radial nerve from the posterior cord, and median and ulnar nerve from the median cord, medial cord. You can use the mnemonic, my auntie read my uncle to remember the names of these uh, nerves. Musculocutaneous nerve, axial nerve, radial nerve, median nerve and ulnar nerve. Now, a peculiarity about the nerve supply of upper limb is that the anterior divisions will supply the muscles in the anterior compartment and dermatomes on the ventral surface of the upper limb. The branches from the posterior divisions will supply the muscles in the posterior compartment and the dermatomes on the dorsal surface of the uh, upper limb. Also note that the nerve roots with the values C5 and C6 supply the upper arm and C8 and T1 will supply the digits. Now let's move on to the nerve supply of these terminal branches. First, let's talk about the nerves in the anterior compartment of the upper limb. Musculocutaneous nerve uh, supplies the muscle in the anterior compartment of the arm, that is biceps brachii, brachialis and carocobrachialis. It provides sensation to the lateral part of the forearm. If you look at the diagram, it originates from the lateral cord and the root value is C5 and C6. Median nerve supplies the muscles in the anterior compartment of the forearm and the muscles of the thenar eminence to control the hand movement. It is sensory to digits 1, 2, 3 and medial half of digit 4 on the ventral surface and on the dorsal side uh, to digits 1, 2, 3 till the second phalangeal joint. Now remember, median nerve is formed by the median root of the lateral cord and the median root of the medial cord. So the root value will be C5, C6, C8 and T1. Ulnar nerve innervates the flexor carpi ulnaris on the forearm and the muscles of the hypothenar eminence. Now to remember the muscles innervated by the median nerve, remember all except for your flexor carpi ulnaris. Ulnar nerve is sensory to the skin of digits 5 and lateral half of digit 4 and the adjoining skin on the dorsal surface of the hand. Coming on to the nerves supplying the muscles and skin in the posterior compartment, the axillary nerve innervates the deltoid and teres minor muscle. It gives sensations to the skin on the shoulder joint and inferior part of deltoid as shown in green in the figure. The radial nerve supplies the triceps uh, in the uh, arm and all the muscles in the posterior forearm. It is sensory to associated joints and the overlying skin of the hand on the dorsal surface as shown in green. 
to summarize there are five roots three trunks six divisions three anterior three posterior and three cords and five branches in the brachial plexus now let's talk about the cervical plexus cervical plexus is a network of nerves which are formed by the ventral rami of c1 to c5 it is located in the posterior triangle of the neck let us first review the cutaneous branches uh, all the cutaneous branch uh, nerves enter the skin at the posterior border of the sternocleidomastoid muscle this point is known as the herbs point and is useful for giving cervical block during surgeries now from the fibers of c2 and c3 we have two sensory nerves greater auricular nerve and uh, lesser occipital nerve the greater auricular nerve provides sensations to the external ear and the skin over the parotid gland the lesser occipital nerve supplies the skin of the posterior superior scalp another nerve formed by the fibers of c2 and c3 anteriorly is the transverse cervical nerve or anterior cutaneous nerve which as the name suggests supplies sensation to the skin in the anterior and anterolateral neck and also anterolateral skin of the upper sternum the last cutaneous branch is the supraclavicular nerve from the nerve roots uh, c3 c4 which provides sensation to the supraclavicular fossa upper thoracic region and sternoclavicular joints now let's look at the motor branches the muscular branches are located deep to the sensory branches so uh, from the root of c1 spinal nerve supplies the geniohyoid and thyrohyoid muscles these nerves travel very closely with the 12th cranial nerve the hypoglossal nerve to supply their respective muscles the nerve roots of c1 c2 c3 form a loop of nerves which give off branches to sternohyoid sternothyroid and inferior and superior belly of omohyoid muscles all the muscles depress the hyoid bone and they are all intrahyoid muscles this loop is known as ansa cervicalis the nerve roots of c3 c4 and c5 unite to form the phrenic nerve which innervates the diaphragm uh, another cranial nerve which is closely related to cervical plexus is the spinal accessory nerve and uh, the nerve roots from c2 c3 branches from c2 and c3 will communicate with the uh, spinal accessory nerve so to conclude there are uh, four cutaneous branches from the cervical plexus and six motor branches from the cervical plexus Thank you.